three inch cutoff saws. Pretty new to the market, but an absolute invaluable tool in the shop. Today I'm gonna to show you two modifications you can do to make them even more valuable in any shop. Keep watching. So the first modification is pretty obvious. We've removed the cutoff blade and we have modified an air uh, mini belt sander to work on this cordless tool. And it works pretty good. I have machined all the parts myself. Pretty basic, you can actually buy kits now that do this. Um, did this one a little while ago. Now I'm gonna actually do it to the DeWalt because why not? I have two air belt sanders here, pneumatic, that I have this huge 24 inch that I wanna convert over to the DeWalt. The second modification that I've actually done on both and I actually ran this for a year that way was to be able to use a four and a half inch angle grinder disc on here, a thrown away one. So you have a four and a half inch angle grinder, you use up the disc and it gets down to about this level max and you can no longer use it. It's just way too small. You end up hitting the housing. Um, so it just can't be used, it's garbage. No, it's not. This right here actually fits on here with a little bit of modification. This is a standard one. This is the one off the four and a half inch angle grinder. You see the whole difference? But we're able to take a four and a half inch angle grinder disc, half use it on a four and a half inch angle grinder until it gets to this point, And then we can, with the DeWalt, we can use it down to this. We can use the entire disc and it is amazing. It is better, you can actually get better discs in the four and a half angle grinder than you can for these little three inch. There's just not that much on the market. I can get these amazing like Makita super, super duper thin. So it just makes these even more powerful. Um, but we're gonna do the modification for this as well. I'm gonna show you how I did that. This modification is pretty simple and most people have already figured it out. All I did, I actually turned these on the lathe but I don't think this is necessary. All I did was create, this is a three eighths hole and I just created a step washer. That's it created a little step washer on there. So normally you would just put this blade directly on there like that, tighten it down with the included washers that usually come with this. I made my own washers. One's just a little bit thicker. They're essentially fender washers. Um, and then boom, it just holds it centered. Now you don't have to do it on the lathe. This modification you could do very simply with just some fender washers. Here's a washer right here, just a random 3 8 inch hole in the middle which is pretty dang close, good enough. But the outside is just barely too big. Oh, no, it's not. There it is right there. I don't know what size. This is a 3 8 inch inside diameter wa washer. Actually fits perfectly on 3 8 so it actually might be um, like a 5 16 because usually they kind of bump them up. I don't even know. But this, this washer fits in there perfectly. I could take this. Um, Another, I could get another fender washer if I found some fender washers in here with a 3 8 inch hole, um, which it'll take a minute, but I won't. So put a washer on, stack that, put that on, put another fender washer on, and you're done. And even if you're a little bit off, just grind it lightly for a minute and it'll be perfectly smooth. The only thing is, is this washer has to be thinner, just barely thinner than the thickness of your blade. So you may have to actually sand that down just a, just a little bit. But that modification, super simple, allows you to utilize junk blades indefinitely. Okay, the next one is converting it to a bell sander. Like I said, you can actually buy the kit to do this and it includes the, uh, the little uh, driver drum right here, the little belt drum, and a little adapter plate to allow you to crimp this down. I'll show you what that kind of looks like. Let's take this belt in. So the way that this entire assembly right here attaches, it's just on this little ring that you make and you put on there or you just buy. So this little ring right here is just a little collar for this to crimp on. So you can see that the uh, stock one is the exact same. Just has this little collar that this crimps on and then you just have a little drum. I do not think you can utilize the original drum. It's just configured differently. You have to have like a little bit different spacing off of it, but Anything is possible. The, what people are doing is they're actually buying super duper cheap versions of this, like at Harbor Freight, for 30 bucks, 25, 30 bucks, something like that. And you get this assembly, and then they're spending 50 bucks. I'll put a link to it for a kit where you can actually get this little thing and this little thing and maybe a couple screws or something. But we're gonna make all of it ourselves. Um, so on the DeWalt, I have never done this on the DeWalt. I did it on the, uh, I built the complete one 
for this Milwaukee. But first thing I had to do is even to do the first modification is I actually had to widen this out a little bit. DeWalt decided to make this little cutout a little bit smaller than the um, than the Milwaukee was. So I, you couldn't actually get these larger blades like in there past that before. They were just a little too tight. So I just ground that down a little bit. But all we got to do is remove the backing plate. So you just remove four little Torx bolts. There's a spring washer in there just to add tension. And there's some detents back here um, just to help it lock in those different positions. I like to modify all my own tools to suit what I want them to do. Um, I'm not afraid of warranties. You know, that doesn't scare me. If it's going to break, it breaks in the first 30 seconds of use. Okay, this is what we need. All we need now is a, a ring just like this that would attach to here. So it looks like we need a um, collar that is roughly inch and a half and about three eighths of an inch wide. So I actually have a chunk of solid aluminum that's been used for a dozen projects. So we're just gonna put that in, take it down an inch and a half, uh, probably drill a hole and slice it off. Nothing super crucial. I am not a machinist, I will tell you that. This is my super duper worn out 1935 South Bend lathe that I am still learning on. So don't take machinist advice for me. What I'm doing is probably wrong. And you guys will let me know for sure when I do something wrong on the lathe. So let's clean it up a little bit. We'll go from there. Well, that's the fun of lathe work. I feel like an idiot. I'm like, I'll just do one more pass and show you guys a close-up shot and make a cool shot. And what I did is I overshot. So let's, uh, let's push it back a little bit further. The fun of lathe work. I think that was a heavy pass. Come on. It's aluminum. Doesn't care. That should be right on, but I gotta cut that off. You'll find out real quick with an old, like, worn out lathe, the one thing they absolutely hate to do is use a parting tool and just cut off because there's too much play in it and so it just grabs. So if we only have to do it once, I'm gonna be golden. So I'm gonna do the other one with a bandsaw. So let's do this. Uh, we still got to drill it and then part it. So clean up the end real fast. About half inch. Um, so if we went a little bit bigger, like nine sixteenths or something, should be good. So I'll grab a nine sixteenths drill bit, center drill real fast. Oh yeah, nice and tight. Probably a little too snug, but I'd rather have it snug and sand it down just a, just a teeny bit if you needed to. So we got a 9 drill bit in there. Got a depth marked on it. And let's drill. For this, on this one, I, I don't know why I decided to leave a little bit of a shoulder. I didn't on the Milwaukee. It doesn't really matter. Um, this thing will only allow you to go in so deep, but I figured, eh, why not? I did it. Doesn't really matter. So now I just have to drill these holes. I could have bored this whole thing out so it was only the thickness of this washer and then used the original screws, but um, on this one, you can see I just counter sunk them. So I can actually use this plate and just line it up. We can just set it on the back, clamp it, and then I will just drill these holes. I'll probably just hand drill them. And as long as I start from this backside, 
they'll be lined up with this plate and if they come out a little bit crooked on this front side it doesn't really matter and then I'll just countersink them for the heads so they can sit down in there a decent amount so pretty basic good enough for me So we're essentially building this type thing. We need a little skinny end um, and then the part that actually runs the little mini belt. So I got a chunk of, this is actually tiller drive shaft, drives the tines. Got a chunk sitting in here. And on the last one, what I did is I did it just like this in the lathe and then did the backside and then just cut it off, like hogged all this material out. This one but I didn't have to remove it from the lathe. This one, I think I'm actually going to do the skinny side first um, and then take that out, put that back in my jaws and then do the other side because I ended up just by drilling that hole at the very end, at the very end of it, it ended up being just a little bit off and so there's just a teeny bit of a wobble. Um, maybe I can get it better if I do this and, and flip it. We'll see. Probably a little far. That's good. My three jaw is actually close enough to make that spin pretty dang true. Close enough, because that's just, right now we're just clearing some, a hole for the shoulder of the bolt. This. And so we just got to have a hole big enough for the shoulder of this bolt to slide all the way down in there. This is like a reverse thread bolt. Might be going a little bit fast. Let's put it in the uh, back gears. Kick that out. Kick that over. Got to oil the thing too while we're at it. Why not? Oil everywhere. That's super slow. That's going to be really slow.
So just slide that on, tighten up that nut, reverse thread, and that's it. So to adapt it from this, let's take the belt off. This just loosens up. This just comes off, so slide this on. Should be a nice snug fit. And it is. Let's loosen that up just a little bit more. Beautiful. Tighten that up just a little bit. And throw the belt on. There we go. No oh, belt broke. That was a crappy belt anyway. I thought it was already going to break. So let's grab a different belt. I actually don't use this 24 inch very often. So all the belts are super old. When they get old, they're not happy anymore. That works. It's tracking on the front just fine. I don't think anything's bad about that. Position it wherever you want. Yeah, works great. Little nooks and crannies anywhere on automotive. Woodworking even, I guess. Say you even wanted to get down in there where the bolt mounts for the cab of the truck. You could sit there and sand that area. Well, this is a short one. I could use a 24 inch and really get all the way back in there. Something you can't do without one of these. Awesome little tool. I'll put a link to all the tools I used in this video. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll even put a link to where you can actually just buy these kits already done. Um, you do have to buy the tool. It ended up costing you about 100 bucks to do this modification to just buy the stuff. But there you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Okay. You can't reach the brake pedal. You can reach up here, though, right? Okay. So this is the gas pedal. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Okay, I'll shift it into gear for you. Okay. No, come on. You can do it. No, you drive. Come on. No, get back up here. Come on. You can do it. You can drive. No, we're in neutral. Okay, here we go. Shh. You got it. Okay, take the wheel. You got it? Good job. <laughs>